Okay, so let's start right in. Um, so the first demo we're gonna do, very straightforward, is just simulating a sine wave and a gain. So hopefully you all have Simulink open. For now, just like, um, you'll understand the function of all these different blocks I have here slowly. So, <clears throat> but the idea of this model is again to display a sine wave and we're gonna integrate it. There's this integrator block and the scope is basically like an oscilloscope, so it's used for a clock. So, so start a new model file, that's just control N. There are four blocks, so take a sine wave, it's in the sources library. In fact, I can start making it with you too. So control N, that's model, okay? So you go to the sources library, which you see is here. You there, okay? Drag a sine wave onto the model. Then also drag an integrator, which is also in the continuous library. Drag an integrator out. A mux, a mux is just a multiplexer. You could also buy the search thing, so you could just search a mux. Integrator, it's in the continuous library. Second, yep, and then there's scope. Scope is for output display. Sine wave is in the uh, sources. So sources and sinks. Sinks is display stuff, output stuff. Sources is input stuff. Does that make sense generally? Okay, so you should have these four blocks. Scope is in the sinks library, you can look it up, or you can also look it in, um, or it could also be in the um, commonly used blocks, it should also be there. That's called the mux, the multiplexer and that'll be in the signal routing library. You could also search for it, there's a search bar. So once everybody has that set up, maybe you can wait for me. Multiplexer, and so the idea with the multiplexer is that I want to plot both of them on the same scope. That's why the multiplexer is there. What I'm saying? Because the scope only has one input. So you can see that with each block now there are arrows on left and right, one is for input, the left, and the other one the, on the right is for output. And the so scope can only take one input. So if I want to plot them both on the same scope, right, then I need to multiplex them. It's just like if you, um, it's just, yeah. The idea is, I mean, it's most intuitive if you're an electrical engineer, hello Maddie. Um, okay, so everybody have that so far? Okay, so just quickly then, so we have these blocks. Before I start wiring this th together, I just wanna show that you can, so, so for example, you can click, double click on the sine wave and you get this sort of configuration box where you can modify the amplitude, the frequency, et cetera, of the sine wave, right? And similarly for integrator, you know, the initial condition is of course important, so you can see the initial condition and we'll be coming back to this. Right, so basically when you double click anything, you can modify properties that are of interest to you related to the block, right, which, okay. So now let's start wiring these things together. Um, so, so for wiring, I usually prefer going from back to front or from the sink to, uh, from the block that is connected to the block that is connected from, if that makes sense. So backwards wiring basically because it makes it easier. So if the integrator, so I take the thing, wire from the integrator and go to the sine wave, right, like that. You could do the opposite too, but usually the reverse wiring is easier. And so from the integrator, one goes to the mux. Then from the mux, you have stuff going to the scope. And so then finally, you have this point where, you know, you need to basically attach this first input into the mux somehow into the sine wave wire, right? Because sine wave doesn't have any other output. So what happens is you can drag stuff back and you see that big black dot that comes up that shows that, is everybody with me? Big black dot shows that you're now connected to the output of the sine wave. The other way to do this, by the way, this is a, if I leave this, this is a broken wire, this is a red dotted wire, you can click it and hit delete and that gets rid of it. 
You could also right click on this wire, not left click, right click, and then drag it, and then again you have the big black dot. So that's two ways of connecting, to, like causing a split in a wire. You could use right click on the wire and drag it to where you want to drag it to, or you could drag it in the reverse direction. And then okay, so our circuit at this point is pretty much complete. Okay. Um, okay, so we have everything, red dotted wires, we talk about that, talked about that, and so now we're going to run this, okay? So the run is just the green button here. Another important thing is this text box here, which is basically simulation time. And the problem set, I'll tell you what simulation time to use until you actually run it. So for now, you don't need to save this also. That's a good thing to like run it. You can just run it. It does do that beep, which is usually error, but in this case, it means it ran. Um, so then, and then you look at the scope. Good thing, can everybody see this sort of? Just double click on the scope to see the output. Yeah, it's a diff yeah, it's a step size warning, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, and so you could right click on this thing and auto scale or you could press this here to auto scale, and so it just makes the axes a little bit more convenient for you to look at. Now, you can probably see this better on your computers, but usually the first, the first signal that goes into the scope is yellow, and the second one is purple. That's the color coding. Look at it on your own scope. I think it'll be easier. So the first one is a sine wave, which is the yellow, which makes sense because that's the first input going into the scope. The second one, the second one is purple, and that should be the negative of the cosine. So we would expect that that should start at minus one, but it's starting at zero. And so it looks like it's sort of shifted. And so the reason for that is because of the integrator. You remember the initial condition in the integrator was set as zero. So if we make this minus one, which is just a pure negative cosine then, right? And then we run this thing again. Look how the scope is now automatically such, such that you do get a negative of a cosine. So that's why, so for example, that's important. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So that's pretty much, I think, the first demo. So this is showing you sort of just generally the idea is scope, how to output stuff, input stuff. Okay. Yeah, so initial values, you can just double click on integrator. The initial condition box. 